Greetings, students. Welcome to today's lesson. Today, we're going to be looking at Unit 3, Lesson 7, Multiply by 10. All right. So in today's lesson, we are going to consider how it is that we multiply by 10. And furthermore, we want to make sure that uh, we are working towards memorizing these facts. All right. So we're going to look at some different strategies to help us think through how to do this. But in the long run, we do want to be able to memorize it. All right, so we start off with this word problem in the beginning. All right, it says, how can Alex find the total number of cubes? All right, now we can see here that this is a cube and there are 10 rows and 10 columns, all right? So it is 10 by 10, all right? So how would we figure that out, all right? So you can see, that the book has already helped us understand that, all right? So one thing we can do here is just count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, all right? And so 10 times 10 equals 100, all right? And so there are 100 cubes in all. So here we've used skip counting. We could have also used repeated addition. We could also think of there are 10 groups of 10, right? And that's how it would have helped us understand that we needed to use this multiplication equation in order to solve this. Now, one thing that teachers will often teach is that when you multiply by 10, you add a zero, right? So let's just do another problem. Let's do five times 10, all right? One way we could think of this is that we're just going to put the five and add a zero, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. That, that is true here. We just added a zero. The way I want you to think about it is that I think is more helpful is instead of thinking of I just add a zero, think I'm going, I want you to think about moving the place value of the five, one to the left, right? So five times 10 equals five. Now that five was in the ones place, but now I'm gonna move it over and I'm gonna put it in the tens place. And if I put it in the tens place, well, I need something in the ones place to hold that value. So what's a place value holder? A zero. And so instead of just thinking, multiplying by 10 at a zero, think I'm moving the place value over one so that the place value is now in the tens place, okay? That'll be helpful as we get further into math and we look at things like decimals, all right? Okay, very good. All right, so let's look at this learn together. All right, how many beads are there all together? All right, so here we see that there are seven groups and there are 10 in each group. Now we wanna to move towards being able to do this with our, using our math facts, so seven times 10 equals, and we should know that answer. But if we're not there yet, that's okay. So we can just count by tens, all right? So let's use our fingers to help us. So let's go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, okay? So I have seven beakers, so I got to 70. So the answer is 70. There are 70 beads all together, all right? Next, how many slices of bread are there in all? all right, so each group has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So there are 10 pieces of bread in each group. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six groups. All right, so we do six times 10. Now, how do we figure that out? So we should know six times 10 equals, right? We can think about moving the place value over. That's one way to think about it. Or we can count by tens, okay? So counting by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, okay? So now I got six fingers up, I got the 60. So there are 60 pieces of bread. So there are 60 slices 
at all. All right, next we have an array. So here we have an array and we need to figure out what this problem is. So we can see here that there are one, two, three rows and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten columns. So how do we understand that? Well, we can say there are three times ten. Three times ten is, if you don't know, ten, twenty, thirty. Okay. Is that the only way I could write that multiplication sentence or that multiplication equation? Is there another way I could solve that? Yeah, there's another way I can do that, right? Because I could put 10 first. There are 10 groups this way. There are 10 groups of three. So 10 times three, 10 times three, the number doesn't change. So 10 times three is 30. All right, next, we're gonna count up by tens and find the missing numbers. Zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. All right, very good. Now, next thing I would like you to do is this practice on your own. So page 113, this will be the last page we do. Now, if you don't have your book, what I would like you to do is just to write the answers on another piece of paper. You don't have to write all the, all the, the words out like here. You don't need to, to draw the pictures, all right? But if you, if, you have, if you don't have the book, just put your answers on another sheet of paper and then see if you're able to get them correct. So what I'd like you to do now is to go ahead and complete this page on your own, but you're gonna have to pause the computer. And then when you're done um, with, the, uh, with the exercise, unpause the video and see if you're able to get the answers right. All right, go ahead and pause now. All right, so hopefully you were able to, to get all of the answers done. Now let's see how you did, right? So the first thing is we have um, how many bowling pins are there in all? So we have four groups and there are 10 in each group. So we have four times 10. I right, hopefully we know that answer, but if we don't, we go 10, 20, 30, 40. 40 is the answer here, All right? Also remember, you could just put a four. You know that you're moving the place value over from the ones place to the tens place. So you need something to hold that place value. And what you use to hold that place value is a zero. Okay, so there are 40 bowling balls in all. All right, number two, how much money is there? So we have $10 bills and we have one, two, three, four, five. Now here, it doesn't give you any of the numbers. So what number needs to go first? It wouldn't change your answer, but it does change the way we think about it. Are there 10 groups of five or are there five groups of 10? There are five groups of 10. We put five times 10. Five times 10 is 50. Okay. The five was in the ones place, but we shift it over to the tens place and then we add the zero. So there it is, $50. All right. Next one, multiply. So we have this array, it's three on this side, two on this side. So one way you could have answered this is to go three times 10 equals 30. Or you could have written 10 times three equals 30. Either one of those numbers would have been fine. All right, next. Circle uh, groups of 10. So if you were doing this on another piece of paper, you would just have to count them. The circle groups of 10 and then write any multiplication equation, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm gonna draw a line here and then connect those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now connect those. 
All right, so how would I write this? Okay, well, how many groups do I have? I've circled 10, how many groups do I have? I have two groups, 10 in each group. Two times 10 is 20. All right, that completes the lesson for today. I hope you had a good time. Enjoy uh, your exercise and activity now. I hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.